Welcome to another live sizzling White Horse Media topic uh, coming to you live from North Idaho, which is a state in the United States of America. And America is our topic, American Bible prophecy. And uh, it's interesting that today is June 13, 2020, and we're going to focus on Revelation chapter 13. Uh, I'm here with a new guest that you've probably never met before. This is Dustin Pestlin. He is, uh, I'm going to call you a young man. <laughs> Young man coming mm -hmm. from Dallas, Texas area. Yes, is that correct? And yes, he's the that's director. Correct. He's the director of a ministry, uh, somewhat similar to White Horse Media, mm -hmm. which is called Hope Through Prophecy. I can see your yep. Hope Through Prophecy shirt there. Yep. I've got my White Horse Media shirt. Mm -hmm. So we're we're in sync today. Mm -hmm. uh, Dustin's done a lot of research <coughs> on prophecy. He is the uh, director and the founder of Hope Through Prophecy. Yes, he has uh, a, a very uh, powerful YouTube channel. You can go onto YouTube and look for Hope Through Prophecy with Dustin Pestlin. Mm -hmm. You can find it and you can also see down below the description of this video some of the links to a couple of his uh, programs, one of them on the Antichrist, another mm -hmm. one on the Mark of the Beast. So if you want to learn more about these big topics and about his ministry, check out those links. Yes. So we're going to get in uh, like we normally do. We're still on uh, I guess we're still at the stay-at-home stage uh, where we are in our area, so our local church in Newport is not quite open yet. So we're here for another program, and we'll, like we've done before, we'll have a discussion, we'll have a Bible study, we'll show slides, we'll bring in some special music, we'll take up an offering, and we've got a very interesting offering appeal we'll show you mm -hmm. from the Philippines that I think you will uh, enjoy seeing some of these pictures. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot to do. We'll also have a Q&A like we normally do. So uh, send in your questions in the, uh, in the box uh, on the YouTube channel, and we'll try to get to those as many as we can during the second hour. So mm -hmm. our first song today is called Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah by Fountain View Academy. You've seen them a number of times uh, on our programs, and they're, they're just very good uh, young people coming from Canada. And so they're going to sing our first song, uh, after Dustin leads us in prayer. So All Dustin, right. uh, again, thank you for being here. It's great to be here with you in blessing North Idaho, beautiful area, and good to be in the White Horse studio. I've really uh, been blessed by the ministry for a while, and just great to be here. Yeah, and I, and I understand, again, you're, you're from Dallas, Texas area, so and that you're thinking about possibly moving up here. I am. Yeah, we're considering, I'm considering moving up here. Uh, just a really, really good area. There's a lot of good people around here. A beautiful nature, and so definitely uh, considering. Yeah, and we have lots of snow, so if you do come up here, you'll have to <laughs> gear up for that. Yeah, yep, have to get a good wood stove and yeah. get ready. That's right. <laughs> okay, yes. well, why don't you lead us in prayer? Yeah, let us pray. Okay. Dear God, we are so grateful to be able to open your holy word. We pray you would let your Holy Spirit guide this discussion, guide this meeting. And Father, help us to have a better understanding of the USA's role in Bible prophecy. But most importantly, Lord, prepare our hearts. Help us to be more like Jesus and let your spirit reveal your word to us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay, thank you. Well, I think what I'd like to do to start us out...
strength and shield. Thank you, uh, Fountain View Academy. Thank you, young people, young men and women. Uh, as you saw on the screen, that song was uh, sung in Hawaii. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I'd love to be in Hawaii, <laughs> especially in the dead of winter in, uh, in North Idaho. Yes. <laughs> okay, well, if you have your Bibles, uh, I want to encourage you to open up to the book of Revelation, chapter 13. We're gonna be studying about the beasts and about America. And I think what I'd like to do uh, is start out, Dustin, we've talked about this. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put a picture up on the screen of uh, President Trump. President Trump, who is probably one of the most polarizing individuals in all of history. Mm -hmm. But there he is on June 2nd with his wife, Melania, and they are in front of a statue of Pope John Paul II. Mm -hmm. They're at the uh, National Shrine there in Washington, D.C. Uh, Dustin, that's quite a picture, isn't it? It really is, and it's, it's surprising, you know, because years ago you would have never imagined, you know, such a, such a picture, you know, being a Protestant nation, the United States, um, that would have just been a foreign idea to even have a, a U.S. president um, support a shrine like that. Right, and the shrine is, uh, was was uh, <coughs> created, from what I understand, f by the Knights of Columbus. Mm. And it's interesting, I found something on my phone, if I've got it right here. Yes, I'll just read this. Uh, about this shrine, that it is adjacent to the Catholic University of America and the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in the Brooklyn neighborhood of Northeast Washington, which mm. of course is right in the shadow of, uh, of the headquarters of the government of the United States. Mm. And so uh, we're not gonna get into all the politics behind this picture. Uh, we, we do know that Trump took this picture or had this picture taken, then he went to the, the White House shortly thereafter. He was there at the shrine for about 20 minutes, went to the White House and signed an executive order uh, promoting religious freedom. Mm. And without getting into all the ins and outs of the, the politics behind this, uh, we want to just focus on the fact that it's, it's very significant that we have a president of the United States standing next to a, a statue of a, a Roman Catholic Pope mm -hmm. uh, and a shrine dedicated to him next to the headquarters of our government. Yes. <coughs> and then the whole issue of religious freedom. Mm. And we want to just get into these issues yes. about Catholics, Protestants, America, and the Bible and freedom and tie this in with the book of Revelation, mm -hmm. chapter 13. That's really yes. what we want to do. So we just uh, felt that that picture was a good springboard mm -hmm. into this topic. So uh, Dustin, why don't we start out yes. by just looking at Revelation chapter 13 mm -hmm. and let's just read uh, about the first beast All in right. verses one and two, mm -hmm. beast number one from the sea and mm -hmm. then uh, we'll put a picture about that. We've got that there. And then we'll also look at beast number two. So right. why don't you read about beast number one? Sure. Revelation chapter 13 and one, we read, And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, 
and his mouth is the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Okay, so there is beast number one. And mm -hmm. uh, I've given many seminars on the book of Revelation, and you've taught mm -hmm. on your YouTube channel about Revelation. And it's just fascinating to see this, this creature, you know, rising up out of the sea. You'll never find uh, any real creature mm -hmm. anywhere in the world that in any zoo <laughs> that looks like this. Uh, right. My kids and I and my wife, we've been to a lot of zoos. We like mm. going to zoos and looking at the animals. And yes. But there was no seven-headed, ten-horned, <laughs> leopard-like beast with a mouth like a lion, feet like a bear that we've ever seen. Not at all. So this is uh, definitely a, a symbol mm. of something. Mm. So that's beast number one from the sea. So, yes. okay, why don't you read verse 11 and let's look at beast number two. Sure. Describing the second beast. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb. And he spake as a dragon. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Okay, right, great. So uh, we've got two beasts mm. describing or described in Revelation. Mm -hmm. And we want to talk about these beasts. Who are these beasts? Who aren't these beasts? Mm. Uh, and why don't we just, before we, we go into what you know, other verses say about this and put the pieces together, mm. why don't we just talk about, uh, in your experience, generally, what are some of the views that are out there yeah. about this first beast or about this second beast in, in other churches, other people's thinking? You know, what are some of yeah. the opinions on this? You know, Steve, I've noticed several different opinions about the identity of this first beast. Uh, fortunately, we don't have to go by opinions. We can go right to the Bible. Mm -hmm. But the opinions that are often popular, some people, uh, first of all, some people just dismiss uh, Revelation. They say it's confusing, it's scary, we don't need to read it. Um, I don't believe that to be true um, because Jesus himself revealed that this is a revelation of Jesus to his people. Um, so we need revelation and God will help us to understand it. Um, another interpretation of this first beast is the idea that it's some future power that we cannot understand. Um, someone who will, you know, uh, known as the Antichrist, that will basically be in the future and it'll be a mysterious power and that we don't know who that is now. Um, another belief is that this was someone in the past and often it is pinned to an individual known as Antiochus Epiphanes. And unfortunately, if you study history, that individual does not meet all of the qualifications given to this first beast. And when did he live? When did Antiochus Epiphanes live? He lived after, after the rule of uh, Alexander the Great. Yeah, he was part of the Seleucid Empire, which was actually one of the divisions that Greece was split up into. Uh, after, after Alexander died. Yeah, after Alexander so died. So he was a Greek ruler. Yes. Uh, during the time of Greece, before the, the Roman Empire yes. really took over. And some people, and they're called preterists, aren't they? Yes. They're the preterists, mm -hmm. uh, going to the word, or the prefix pre, that mm -hmm. this beast was fulfilled way back Right, uh, pre-Jesus, even in the mm -hmm. in the time of of, of Antiochus Epiphanes, and yeah. some people think it's they'll, they'll go a little bit forward, but they're still preterists, and they they say this first beast was was Nero. Okay, yeah, I've I've heard that as well, and the other view is known as futurism, the idea that this uh, first beast will be in the future, and again, we don't currently know who it is according to the futurists. Right, a, a single bad guy, yeah. like like in the Left Behind series. Exactly. Nikolai Carpathia was the fictitious person in the in the Left Behind series yeah. that was that the whole drama swirled around him. So the futurist mm. view is that it's a future man mm. coming up at the end uh, or after the rapture. Yes. And the preterist view, Antiochus or Nero. Mm -hmm. uh, I, my wife once said to me, she said, "How could it be Nero? Nero's dead." Mm -hmm. And yeah. she just you know buried that view <laughs> yeah. with a with a very <laughs> simple statement. I yeah. thought that's good. That's right. <laughs> uh, because this beast, when you read the verse, it talks about the beast being active mm. when Jesus comes at right. the, the end times. So right. it doesn't really fit exactly. Uh, so anyway, now what about the second beast? What what's uh, 
who do many people think, or what do they apply the second beast to? Let's just say yeah. the first beast, you know, is, is, is somebody in the future, that's their yeah. view, then who's the second beast? Yeah, I've heard the second beast is often, if you watch, you know, if you've heard of the Left Behind books or anything like that, uh, sometimes the second beast is kind of, a, kind of an evil sidekick or a henchman, you know, to the, f to the first beast. Right. Kind of like, uh, you know, a sinister, you know, sidekick. Yeah, he's his support mm -hmm. person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so again, the preterist view puts it all in the past, long, long mm -hmm. time ago. And the futurist view puts it in the future, typically after the rapture, after we're gone. Yes. After the church is gone. Mm -hmm. And so both of these views don't have a present application that this right. is something happening right now in front of us. That's right. And they kind of take the urgency off God's people who are living today. Because in a sense, they're saying it's, it's done in the past or it's going to happen in the future. So it kind of releases people from that sense of urgency. That's right. Now, and now at the beginning of, uh, of our discussion, you mentioned uh, Protestantism mm -hmm. and, and how you know, early American Protestantism would have mm -hmm. had a difficult time with the President of the United States going to a national Catholic shrine mm -hmm. Com created in commemoration of a pope and having a, uh, a picture taken in front of this statue. Absolutely. Uh, and and, and you're, you're right. Mm -hmm. I mean, this would have been uh, very difficult mm -hmm. for early American Protestants to handle mm -hmm. because if you look at history, uh, when America first started, uh, there was a lot of suspicion mm -hmm. of, uh, of Catholics. Mm. And it's interesting that uh, Abraham Lincoln in the Civil War, he was completely convinced mm -hmm. that uh, the Jesuits mm. of the Roman Church were very involved mm. in um, f fostering this division mm. that was going on. And when John F. Kennedy was elected as president in the 1960s, uh, he was the first Catholic president ever to be elected in American mm. history. And there was a lot of uh, suspicion and discussion about this during the time of his campaign. And, and from what, I, what I've read was that when uh, Kennedy made a statement that if you elect me as your president, I'm going to put America and the Constitution first, mm. even above you know, my church, mm. uh, that went a long way <laughs> toward uh, him getting elected because yes. the American people appreciated that. Mm. And, and it's just a little bit of background on this. The reason why there was so much suspicion in early, early American history and continuing on for, for a long time mm -hmm. was because, and this is something very important to understand, and it's a fact of history. It's easy to discover. You could Google it. Uh, you can do your homework on this. It's a fact of history that for about 400 years from the time of Martin Luther, who um, spearheaded the Protestant Reformation mm -hmm. in Germany, and then eventually led to the Lutheran Church and the separation between Protestantism and Catholicism, mm -hmm. the exodus out of the Catholic Church in the 1500s, uh, their, their belief as a result of studying the Bible and looking at what was happening in Europe and what had been happening in history, they were by and large unanimous mm. that the, the first beast of Revelation 13 was a symbol of the Roman Catholic Church system That's right. centered in the Vatican. Yes. Isn't that true? Absolutely. And um, so many of the reformers, you have Luther and Wycliffe and even many more modern Protestants, um, that was their belief. Um, you even have Charles Spurgeon, and that was the widespread belief in Protestant Christianity um, that the Catholic Church-State Union uh, is the Antichrist. Now, it's very important that we note this is not talking about the individuals within that church. Right. There's many beautiful, sincere, loving Catholics That's right. that I believe we will see in heaven. Um, but the Bible is clear when it identifies this false system of worship. That's right. You're, you're right. And, and we've mm -hmm. said this many times in our White Horse Media programs that mm -hmm. this is not uh, designed to be, to point the finger at individual yes. Catholic people. Yes. Because th there's a difference between the mm -hmm. people and the system yes. centered in, in Rome. Mm -hmm. and, and, but we need, to, we need to look at these things square in the face. And, and, yeah. and like we said, you know, it is a, it's, not, 
It may not be politically correct to mm. say what we're saying, yeah. but it's not fantasy. It's not fake news. That's right. Uh, yeah. It is a fact of history yes. that Protestantism pretty much unanimously for hundreds of years mm -hmm. looked at that first beast and saw it as a symbol of the Roman, the Roman church system. Yeah. And um, it's interesting, Steve, because earlier we spoke about uh, preterism and futurism. Those two systems of belief were actually designed in response to the Protestant Reformation exactly. in the 1600s. And they were created by Jesuit priests, which That's are right. affiliated with the Catholic Church. That's right. And so those two systems were very foreign. That's right. Um, the idea of uh, the Antichrist being in the future or far in the past. That's right. And, they, and the Jesuits created this view mm -hmm. in response to the Reformation because yes. the Reformation said, it's you. Mm -hmm. And the Jesuits said, no, it's not us. It's there or there. Exactly. And they did yeah. that to deflect mm -hmm. opinion and and those opinions have become very, uh, very strong these yes. days within uh, the mainstream Christian church. They've mm. forgotten their history. They've forgotten the past. They don't know what Luther taught or mm. Wesley taught or Calvin taught or yes. Spurgeon taught yeah. or uh, Matthew Henry's famous Bible commentary, which is the most famous commentary in all of history. Mm. Many, many uh, pastors have Matthew Henry's commentary in their, in their church libraries, mm -hmm. in their, right on their bookshelves. And if they open up one of Matthew Henry's commentaries and look at Revelation chapter 13, mm -hmm. they'll be surprised to see that mm -hmm. Matthew Henry pinpointed the Roman church. Yes. Uh, right there in Matthew, or in, yeah. in um, Revelation chapter 13. Uh, yeah. White Horse Meany has a little book mm. on this topic, which is called The Antichrist Identified. It's just a little pocket book that goes through Daniel 7, Revelation 13, the first beast, and goes into all the details of what the Bible actually says. And then it looks at history to see if if the shoe fits. And uh, we've linked this, this little pocketbook in the description under our videos, under our video for today. And uh, there's another link to a program that uh, Hope Through Prophecy has mm -hmm. done. And, and what's the name of that program again? Uh, it's called The Antichrist, uh, 10 Proofs from the Bible. And it's amazing, Steve. It, it's so clear when you actually go to the Bible and look at what the Bible says, that this system perfectly perfectly fulfills every last one of those points. And no other organization in history comes even close. Um, so it's, we're so thankful that God has revealed this message to us. And it's really a message of warning, but also a message of love. That's right, and we mm -hmm. are, we at White Horse Media and at Hope Through Prophecy are, are holding up the torch Amen. of, uh, of mm -hmm. what has been taught in the past yes. and which we still believe because mm -hmm. this book, this book doesn't change. Mm. This book is still the same. It says Amen. the same thing that it said in the days of, of Luther. Yes. Now, let's go to verse 11 because our real focus uh, in this program is, is the second beast, Revelation mm. 13, 11. So let's just put that text on, on the screen again and let's just read that verse again. Uh, mm -hmm. Dustin, why don't you just read sure. that text? Sure, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Okay, yeah, that, that's good. So there we have the text, the mysterious text. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, before we even go into the details, I think it's significant that in the, at the beginning of the verse, John says, I saw another beast. Mm -hmm. uh, I make a big point of this in my, in my seminars that John didn't create the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. He didn't just decide, I'm going to sit down and write this. Mm -hmm. This entire book was given to him in a vision yes. when he was an old man as a prisoner mm -hmm. on an island called Patmos, Patmos which is yeah. a, an island that you can visit today. Mm -hmm. You can see the island. You can go where John went. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was there, and then he had this vision, and he said, I saw, he saw this first beast. Uh, in verse 1, he saw a beast rise up. And then in verse 11, he saw this new beast mm. coming up. Mm. And that this was not something that he just created. It was a revelation. That's right. And, and it was supernatural. God showed him mm. these creatures that were going to be coming up. Yes. In, in the days ahead. G can and give you goosebumps. That's right. And, that and there's so much that. information in just this one verse in yes. verse 11. There's so much information packed in there that it really impresses me mm. with the uh, incredible wisdom and, and m magnificence 
of God, mm, that he showed his servants a long time before this happened, mm. what was going to be developing. Amen. So let's just, let's just unpack this and look at some yeah. of these details. He said, I, I beheld or I saw another, which shows that there was a first one and now That's here's right. a second one. Mm -hmm. He saw another beast. Mm. Now, as you know well, uh, in order for us to correctly understand this prophecy, we have to go, you know, first things first, our ABCs. Yes. Uh, one plus one is two. We have to start at the basics. Mm -hmm. And the basics start out with biblically defining what a beast is mm -hmm. in prophecy. Yes. So why don't you shed some light on that? Yes. Well, we, as you said, we have to let the Bible interpret it itself. You know, we don't want to give it our private interpretation. And fortunately, the Bible tells us what a beast represents in Bible prophecy. Um, in fact, if we look in the book of Daniel, um, Daniel actually reveals, and there's a, a Bible verse that shares this, that the fourth beast is a fourth kingdom upon the earth. And this is referring to really a vision that God gave to Daniel of the four world empires that would rise and fall. And in Daniel 2, those, images, those kingdoms are actually depicted by metals. But Daniel 7, which is a parallel prophecy to Daniel chapter 2, actually depicts those same kingdoms as beasts. And if there is any doubts or questions remaining, uh, Daniel 7 actually tells us that the fourth beast will be a kingdom, will be the fourth kingdom. So a beast in Bible prophecy represents a kingdom. That's right. And those kingdoms in Daniel 7, clearly and historically, and most commentators, commentators will agree with this, mm -hmm. 99% of them mm -hmm. uh, see the four beasts in Daniel 7, starting with the lion, the bear, mm -hmm. the leopard, and the dragon, uh, symbolizing the four nations of Babylon, Persia, yes. Greece, and Rome. Exactly. Daniel was in Babylon when he had that dream. And yes. you start with Babylon, you go to Persia, you go to Greece, you go to Rome, and those are the great nations that have ris uh, risen and fallen in human mm -hmm. history. Uh, it's, it's, a common, it's common knowledge, it's yes. in the history books, there's mm -hmm. no doubt about it, there's no, there's no guesswork. We can see it right there. And the mm -hmm. angel said mm -hmm. in Daniel 7, 23, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth. Yes. And it's also a fact that Daniel 7 links with Revelation 13 mm -hmm. because the first beast is like a, like a, a he has a ma mouth of a lion, mm -hmm. body like a leopard, feet like a bear. And then there's the dragon who gives him his power. Mm -hmm. And those are the same creatures that are in Daniel 7. Yes. So we have a perfect link between Daniel 7 and Revelation 13. Mm -hmm. And Daniel 7 says that the beast is a kingdom. Yes. So then we get to Revelation 13, 11, And John says, I saw another beast. Mm -hmm. If we just follow the sequence and stick to the text. Absolutely. Then yes. we're reading about another uh, nation, mm -hmm. right? Another kingdom or nation like... Yes like Babylon or Persia mm -hmm. or Greece or Rome, now we go down farther and we see a new, a new power that's right. coming up. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a clue there, <laughs> clue number one, yeah. <laughs> that we're dealing with uh, another nation. Mm -hmm. Now then let's look at the location where it comes up. Mm -hmm. uh, it Amen. comes up, or actually maybe we should look at the timing of when it comes up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's look at that. Verse 11 says, I saw another beast coming, coming up. Coming up out of the earth. Right. Now, before mm -hmm. we get to the earth part, yes. let's notice the coming up part. Mm -hmm. uh, this beast is actually coming up at the same time mm -hmm. that the first beast is going down. Mm. And we, we see that from verse 10, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 10 describes the wounding That's right. of the first beast. He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. Mm -hmm. He that kills with the sword, which is what the first beast did, he killed mm -hmm. people, he must be killed with the sword. Mm -hmm. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So he's wounded by the sword. He's going down in verse 10. Mm -hmm. And we see later on in verse 12 that his wound is healed, but we'll get to that. Mm -hmm. But verse 10 again describes the context of uh, he's going into captivity, mm -hmm. he's going down, and then in verse 11 we have another beast coming up. Coming up, yeah, right, at the same, same time. time. That's yeah. right. Now, what 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 was going on at the time, or what you know when the first beast went down? What led yeah. to the wounding? What led to its going into captivity? Yeah. What was that all about? 
Yeah, well, we know that the papacy dominated, you know, throughout all the Dark Ages. You know, they were the power. Uh, kingdoms would actually be submissive to the power of the papacy. They would ask permission, you know, for, to go to war or for whatever they needed to do. However, something interesting happened. In the late 1700s, we have the French Revolution, and it was basically an overthrow of religion, uh, specifically the papacy, the Roman Catholic Church State Union. And eventually what happened is there was a French general by the name of Berthier, and he actually took the Pope captive. Now, that was really unheard of because the papacy was basically seen to be untouchable. Mm -hmm. And this idea that a French general, a political power, <coughs> could actually take the Pope captive um, really wounded the papacy. And in fact, the Pope died in captivity. I think it was about two years or less later. And that really affected the power of the papacy in Europe. And they no longer had the prestige and the power that they once had. And so that event took place, as the slide showed, in 1798. Right. And um, there's, a, there's a lot of history behind this. Yes. When the, when the Reformation grew in Germany in the 1500s mm -hmm. and it spread out into Europe in the 1600s and 1700s, uh, the French largely stayed with Catholicism. Mm. Uh, they, they rejected the Reformation. Mm. They, they let out in one of the most horrific events in history, which was called St. Bartholomew's Massacre, where like 70,000 Protestants were yeah. butchered Horrible. in a very short time. Yes. And so there was a, a, a rejection <coughs> of the Reformation and in favor of Catholicism, mm. but as time went on, uh, the French just realized that, you know, those that were left in mm. France, as Protestantism was gone, yes. what was left was, uh, you know, degenerated and yeah. eventually decided to throw off all religion. They That's didn't right. want the Catholic Church, they didn't want religion, they didn't want the Bible, they didn't want yes. anything. And so, they, this led France into the French Revolution, mm. which led to the reign of terror yes. and the guillotine going up and down and, mm. you know, just the bloody massacres. And it also led to Napoleon's general going mm -hmm. to the Vatican, That's right. uh, like you mentioned and the slide mentioned, and mm -hmm. just basically abolishing mm -hmm. uh, the Vatican and taking the Pope captive, which, yes. which wounded the church. It, it definitely so did. The, the Roman church went into captivity. That's right. It was wounded, mm -hmm. uh, it, th it ha which had killed with the sword, was then killed by the sword, mm -hmm. and the ultimate sword really is the Word of God. Amen. The, the Reformation used the Word as the sword, and mm. then what happened in, in the 1700s was eventually the sword of France finished yeah. the job mm -hmm. and uh, wounded the papacy. Mm -hmm. And so we have, in prophecy, we have one beast going down mm -hmm. and another beast going up. And it's very interesting that on one side of the Atlantic, you, have, you had France in, in total turmoil. Mm -hmm. And on the other side of the Atlantic, you have the new nation. You have a new nation springing up. That's right, and rising up. The world had never, like the world had never seen before. That's right, and it was at the same time. Yes. 1773, uh, I believe, was the beginning of the French Revolution. Mm. 1798 was the wounding mm -hmm. of the Vatican by Napoleon's general. Yes. And 1776 mm -hmm. was our Declaration, Declaration of, Independence. of Independence. 1789, the Constitution. Mm -hmm. 1791, the uh, establishment of the Bill of Rights. Yes. And all of this is going on. One beast going down, one beast coming up yes. at the very same time. Very which same time. Was really what prophecy was mm. that Amen. was pinpointing. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's get to the, uh, to the earth part. All right. Back to the text. And it says that he would be coming up out mm. of the earth. Mm -hmm. Out of the earth. Now, what do we know about? about this, the earth, what can we yeah. learn from that? Well, you students of Bible prophecy, and, and of course, uh, White Horse Media and Hope Through Prophecy teach this, um, that the Bible teaches that waters represents peoples, multitudes, tongues, and nations. And the book of Revelation uh, reveals that. I don't know the verse off the top Chapter of my head. Chapter 17, verse 15. Chapter 17, verse 15, thank I think you. we have a slide on that. And so what we had then is if the waters are representing peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues, then an earth is therefore representing a lack of people or an unpopulated area. 
and that couldn't be a, a better description. There was some people here when this nation was founded, but it was widely a very unpopulated area. Um, in contrast to example for Europe, uh, Central Europe, Western Europe, where Rome came up out of, which was heavily populated. Um, the U.S. on the other side of the Atlantic, as you said, was very unpopulated. And so that would represent a, a new beast or nation coming up out of the earth. All right, let's just again take a look at that. We have chapter 13, verse uh, 1. We have the first beast coming up out of the sea. And in verse 11, we have the second beast coming up out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And we have in chapter 17, verse 15, mm -hmm. the angel saying that the water, mm -hmm. the waters which you saw where the harlot sits are people, multitudes, nations, and tongues. Mm -hmm. And that indicates, right, there's the text. There it is. That okay. indicates that that water or ocean represents lots of people and, yes. and, the, and the Roman church. And the same with the beasts of Daniel 7, and the lion, mm -hmm. the bear, the leopard, the dragon, they all rose out of the sea. Yes. And uh, so did the papal power rose out mm -hmm. of the sea, showing that um, these nations rose up out of the ocean of people mm -hmm. in Europe and the Middle East. Yes. Whereas the second beast comes out of the earth mm -hmm. in contrast to the sea, which is more of a, of a wilderness area. That's right. And that's exactly what happened um, mm -hmm. when the pilgrims and, and the nations began to, people began to leave Europe mm -hmm. and go to the shores of the New World. Yes. Uh, they, they did that because they were looking for religious freedom. They were Ex seeking absolutely. to escape from persecution that had been happening in Europe and in England. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Church of England eventually followed uh, in the steps of the Catholic Church, even the Reformation Church of England. When, when mm -hmm. the, the Reformation spread to England, it grew there, but the Church of England maintained its connection with the state mm -hmm. and began to enforce mm -hmm. uh, Church of England teachings. Mm -hmm. And there were people there within uh, the Church of England and in, in England mm -hmm. that decided that they, you know, they didn't believe in that kind mm -hmm. of persecution. There were certain things they didn't agree with. And so they left England, went to Holland, and then there was a, a flood of mm -hmm. immigrants going mm -hmm. across the Atlantic Ocean seeking freedom in a new world, in, in an right. area that uh, was largely unpopulated, mm -hmm. largely wilderness. Mm -hmm. I, I, there were some people here, they yeah, were the you Native, know, Native Americans, Americans. Yeah. that's right, and there's mm -hmm. a lot of history behind all that, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's a fact that uh, the second that this nation did rise up mm -hmm. out of more of a wilderness area. Mm -hmm. and, and another, another point, uh, Dustin, is that we know that this beast that comes up, that it, it doesn't come up way down in the time of Nero. Right. or Antiochus Epiphanes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know that because at the end of chapter 13, this beast is involved in enforcing the mark, mm -hmm. the mark of the beast, which is an end time event. That's right. It's an end time event. So this mm -hmm. is not an ancient nation that comes up long mm -hmm. time ago. This is a nation that comes up out of a wilderness area at the same time that the first beast is going down, getting wounded, he's coming up uh, mm -hmm. in, an, in a wilderness area and he becomes active mm -hmm. at the end of time yes. when the mark of the beast is enforced. That's right. Very active or not becomes active, but he maintains his activity and he, he does something. He's involved in something that's horrific yes. at the very end. And we know yes. that that's still, that is still coming up in the future. Mm -hmm. So we just you know, need to put these pieces together. Mm -hmm. Now then, uh, why don't you read the next little clue there in verse 11, after the earth. What's the next clue? Sure. And he had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. Right, two horns. Mm. Two horns like a lamb. Now let's just talk about those horns first. I noticed something mm -hmm. some time ago as I was really contemplating this, that there is something um, missing mm. on those horns ah. that you find in the first beast. When you look okay. at the first beast in verse, uh, verse 1, he also ha he has ten horns, and right. the second beast has two horns, mm. but there's something missing on the two horns that are on top of the ten horns. That's <laughs> right. 
Yeah. Well, what are, what's, what's missing? Well, um, Steve, I noticed in verse chapter 13, verse 1, it actually says mm. that the first beast is having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns. In that second beast, there is no mention of any crowns. Right. Yeah, th th that is a very mm -hmm. significant point. You know, and people just really, if you really look closely at this text, that's why I mentioned at the beginning, John, where John said, I saw this. And you look at these details, mm -hmm. uh, it's, just, it's just phenomenal that uh, there's no way that John could have just imagined this mm -hmm. or thought this up. These yeah. details are so are so relevant and so significant and so pertinent word by word by word yes. that you just get this sense that this is from a, ma a mastermind. Absolutely. That God is a mastermind mm -hmm. in revealing this yes. to, to John. And so anyway, let's, let's make that point about the two horns. Uh, the, yeah. in the first beast, the, the horns have crowns. That's right. Whereas the second beast has two horns with no crowns. And That's what do right. crowns represent? Well, a crown will represent uh, a king you know, having, having political power ruled by a king. Right. And that's what was happening in Europe. You know, these different nations had kings. They had um, kind of, they call that a, a monarchy. Right, they were monarchies. Monarchies, where the U.S. was a very unique nation. And, you know, I, t I used to teach U.S. history as well as world history. And one of the things that I would help my students to remember this w by, the United States was known as a country without a king in a church without a pope. And they were very proud of that. It was something that um, was unique, and it was something that gave them freedom that they did not have in Europe. So they had no kings. And, and the U.S. today is the same way. Um, it's a um, country ruled by the people, where the people have power to vote and help have a say in the laws. And so it makes us very unique with our freedoms. That's right. We are a democratic republic. Yes. A constitutional democratic republic. It's, mm -hmm. a, it's a republic because its, it's uh, leaders are elected mm -hmm. by a democratic process where people, uh, the majority vote exactly. to elect representatives who then become the leaders of the country yes. uh, based on the principles of a constitution. Mm -hmm. a and that form of government is very, very different from the Vatican. Yes. The Vatican is a, uh, is a church state union. Some have mm. said it's really a state mm. in the garments of a church, mm. uh, but it's a church state union. Po Pope, uh, today, Pope Francis is not just a, a pastor of a church. Mm -hmm. He is the, he's the, the king, really, mm. of a government of wow. the Vatican. Uh, and and it's, a, it's just a fact of history that in the mm. Catholic system of government, you have church and state combined. Uh, and, and throughout European history, the, the popes believed that they had the divine right mm. to rule over kings mm. and to uh, implement their laws through kings. Mm -hmm. they, they believed that. That was, yes. their, that was the fundamental principle of Catholicism, mm. and it still is today. Yes. That the Ro and the Roman Church, you know, hasn't, hasn't changed in that regard. It is mm. still a church-state union at the Vatican. The Vatican right. is a country. Yeah. Pope John, pa or uh, Pope Francis is the, is the king of a country. That's he right. has, they have coins in the yeah. Vatican that has his picture on it. Yes. And they, you know, so there's, there's, there's just no doubt about it, but mm -hmm. America's different. America's very yeah. different. It mm -hmm. has, it has uh, two horns without crowns. That's right. And the, the two horns would indicate a separation of power mm -hmm. within the government of this new nation. Mm -hmm. And it says that those two horns significantly are like a lamb. Mm. Two horns like a lamb. Mm. And what can we learn from that? Well, I, when I think of a lamb, Steve, I don't think of anything like this ferocious first beast. You right. know, I think of- or the second beast. Uh, very pe yeah. Well, the, the first beast is very ferocious, and now we get to the second beast, and a lamb is very peaceful. You know, it's something you can hold, you can pet, mm -hmm. you don't have to worry about it biting your hand off. And so this nation really would be a peaceful nation, or at least start off being mm -hmm. a, a very peaceful nation. And, it's, and we know in the, in the Bible and in the book of Revelation that the lamb is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. There's That's no doubt right. about that. Chapter 13, verse 8 talks about the Lamb's Book of Life. Chapter yes. 14, verse 1, uh, a whole group of people are seen on Mount Zion with the Lamb, mm -hmm. and the Lamb is is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now we should we should uh, definitely clarify that 
this second beast is still a beast. <laughs> yes. It's not a lamb, but mm -hmm. it, it's lamb-like. That's right. It's a nation that is lamb-like mm. in some of its characteristics. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting that a lamb is really a, a baby sheep. Mm -hmm. And this indicates that, that when this nation gets started coming up, mm -hmm. it's lamb-like, meaning it's, it's, it's young. Yeah. It's a young nation mm. that is going to be coming up. Yes. And it's going to be developing principles mm. where it's not ruled by a king, no mm. crowns. It's more democratic and republic and constitutional mm. and with a separation of power. And uh, it's, it's lamb-like. And, and another interesting point is that uh, Jesus as the lamb in Matthew chapter 22 had an encounter with the Pharisees. And the Pharisees tried to, to nail him on what he thought about giving taxes or not, paying mm -hmm. taxes to Caesar. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus took a coin or he had them give him a coin and he held it up and he said, whose image is on this coin? And they said, it's Caesar's image. Mm -hmm. And then he said, give to Caesar what is Caesar, Caesar's and give to God what is God's. Mm. And that, that principle of the lamb mm. where sees the things of Caesar are over here mm. and the things of God are over here Really, when you look at history, mm. it became the foundational principle of the United States government. Absolutely. Where the things of, of Caesar or the things of government, mm. there's a line between those things and the things of God that have mm. to do with religion. Mm -hmm. And that really laid the foundation for ultimately the, uh, the First Amendment. Yes. And I think we have a slide on that First Amendment. Yeah. Why don't you just read those yeah. famous words oh, in our it's Constitution. part of our beautiful Constitution that uh, promotes these wonderful freedoms. It says, Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment mm. of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. So here we see a protection of our religious freedom. And this was a contrast to what the people were seeing in Europe where religion was being enforced. And so I'm so proud of our Constitution. It, it defends our freedoms, it defends our right to worship God as we choose. And I believe that our Constitution was ordained by God. You know, that, that is a, a document that uh, promotes freedom and the ability to worship God as we choose. That's right. And if you look at it carefully, there's, there's two what they call clauses. There's mm -hmm. the establishment clause where mm -hmm. it says Congress, representing government, mm -hmm. shall make no law to establish religion. That's called the establishment clause. Mm -hmm. And it forbids government, civil government, mm -hmm. from enforcing and establishing religion in America. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that clause was put there by the founding fathers was because they knew the history mm -hmm. of what had happened in England, what had happened in Europe, and what happened when the uh, church and the government united to establish religion. What happened mm -hmm. was those that didn't go along mm -hmm. with what was being established, if their conscience told them, I don't agree with this or that, mm -hmm. then they could legitimately be persecuted, or, or yeah. illegitimately, but they claim the right to persecute, and so yeah. that's, that's the history of Europe. That's the it history of, uh, uh, of England when it, when it maintained its yeah. union with the state, the Church Absolutely. of England, and the result has been persecution. And sadly, Steve, it's, it's shocking. A lot of people do not realize this, but um, historians estimate, conservative estimates say that over 50 million people were killed over matters of faith uh, just simply for following their conscience. And so that is the, the sad history of Europe. That's right. And I believe this nation wanted to distance themselves from that and have a nation where we could worship God freely, um, not at the risk of being persecuted or even killed. That's right. And, that, and that's where the second clause comes, comes in, mm. that, the, that the Congress or the government does not have a right to prohibit the free exercise of religion. That's yes. called the free exercise clause. So there's mm. the establishment clause, the free exercise clause, and it's just, it's powerful, yes. that, that principle. And that principle is the principle of the Lamb. It's a principle of yes. Jesus. That, you know, Caesar has its things, mm -hmm. God and the things of religion. Uh, now, of course, God wants people in government to be spiritual and religious as well, yes. but he doesn't, he doesn't want government to have the right to enforce religion. Right. Because what if they enforce the wrong religion? Yeah. That's the problem. And it's really how God works as well, because God never forces himself on us. You know, you think of the rich young ruler, and Jesus gave him the opportunity. He extended his hand, 
and the rich young ruler denied, and Jesus let him walk away. And that's really how God operates. He is a God of freedom, that's right. you Good know, point. not a God of force or pressure. And so this nation wanted to follow um, that godly principle of freedom. That's right. That's mm -hmm. a very good point, that God doesn't force people, and he wants us to follow him, mm. but he will give us the freedom to walk away. Yes. If we choose to do that. That's if right. If we don't want him, he's not going to force us yes. to be religious or mm. to go to church or, mm. or because that's just not his way. That's right. Because he's God of love, and he wants, he wants relationships based on love. Yes. And you can't force someone to love you. That's right. You know, you just, yeah. it just doesn't work. No. <laughs> love, some, love must come from the heart. Amen. So here we have uh, another nation coming up at the time the first beast was going down mm. out of the earth or the wilderness area with uh, two horns without crowns, so indicating a separation, and, the, and they're like a lamb pointing to the principles of Jesus and the principles of freedom. Mm. Uh, and then something happens in verse 11. At yes. the end of the verse, what happens to this lamb-like beast? Yes, we see that it would speak like a dragon. Uh, what a contrast to a lamb speaking as a dragon. Yeah, wow. Yes. You're right, that's a huge contrast. And, yes. and again, you know, we've got the lamb Ultimately, the ultimate lamb is Jesus. Yes. And the ultimate uh, dragon is who? Is Satan. Is mm. Satan, right. He's mm. the ultimate dragon. We know that in Revelation 12, verse, verse 9. Mm. says the great dragon was cast out, called this, that old serpent, also the devil and Satan. Mm. So uh, what happens at the very final moments of time, as you keep reading, is that this lamb-like uh, nation disintegrates into the voice of the dragon, mm. the voice of the dragon. Mm. And, then, and then what happens? What does the next verse say? Well, we see in verse 12, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Right, now in the light of the context of everything that we've been, we've been looking at, mm -hmm. um, you know, when you put all these pieces together, it's really pretty clear who this yeah. second beast is. Yes. Uh, and another point that we haven't mentioned is when you go down to the end of chapter uh, 13, mm -hmm. in verse 16, as he's speaking like a dragon, it says then he will cause, and there's force. Yes. He will cause all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead, mm -hmm. and that no man might buy or sell save he that had the mark. And there's a couple points that I just, I see in many points, but uh, in verse 16 it says, he causes all, A-L-L. -L. And what mm. does that tell us about the strength of mm. this nation at this time? Well, we know it's a worldwide power because in order to be able to cause all, this, this has to be a superpower. Right. This has to be a worldwide um, nation that has the ability to cause this worldwide decree. That's right. And, mm -hmm. it, and it says eventually that nobody can buy or sell mm. during this time, which mm -hmm. indicates that this nation not only is it becomes a superpower, mm -hmm. it starts out, you know, young, coming up out of the earth, but mm -hmm. eventually it becomes a superpower, and it is a, able to uh, enforce upon all eventually. Mm. And then it says that nobody can buy or sell. Mm. So that tells us that this nation has the ability to affect the global economy. Mm. The global economy of buying and selling mm -hmm. is affected by this nation. Wow. So these are a lot of reasons, you know, when you, and we have a book on this too. Mm -hmm. uh, I haven't, I don't think I've mentioned this, but as, we, as I mentioned, White Horse Media has this little book on the Antichrist in which talks about the first beast. And then we have this other little book called the United States in Bible Prophecy that zeroes in on the second beast and looks at all these points, point by point, on page 16 of this little book. 16, it's got 12 points, some of which we've been going, most of which we've been going over right now, point by point by point by point about uh, the details about this, this second beast. Mm -hmm. And when you, when you put all the pieces together, Dustin, how many nations fit this prophecy? Well, there's only one. 
There's only one, Steve. And, you know, I'm so grateful that when God gives us such an important description that he's specific. He doesn't just say it'll be a big nation, it'll be a prosperous nation. He gets very specific in terms of when it would arise, the nature of its government, the style of its government, how it would change over time. Clearly, clearly only the United States of America can fit this description. That's right. And there's 12 points. Yes. So it's not just, you know, it's not just one or two or three. Exactly. But we look at the weight of evidence. It's mm. like, it's like Jesus. Uh, Jesus fulfilled many prophecies. Mm -hmm. He was born in Bethlehem in fulfillment of prophecy. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he came from Nazareth, which is fulfillment of prophecy. And mm -hmm. you go point by point. He was betrayed uh, by a friend, by Judas, for 30 pieces of silver, which was mm -hmm. another prophecy. Yes. And, and he died, uh, and he was buried in the tomb of a rich man, mm -hmm. Joseph Arimathea, fulfilling Isaiah 53. Mm -hmm. and, you just, and there's many, many, many prophecies that, that apply to Christ. And so it's not mm -hmm. just one or two. That's but right. you look at all the evidence, yes. and you see these prophecies point to one person who is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Nobody else in history mm -hmm. has fulfilled all those prophecies mm -hmm. other than Jesus Christ. Yes. And when you look at the first beast of Revelation 13, there's a whole host of different, yes. uh, different clues, different, mm -hmm. different points about it that mm -hmm. you know, at the time of its rise and what it would be like, it would have a mouth speaking great things, it would make war on the saints, mm -hmm. it would be a uh, it would, it would be connected to crowns, right. the church-state union. Yes. You've got all these different points, and when you look at them all, mm -hmm. uh, as you do in your, mm -hmm. your uh, video on the Antichrist, mm -hmm. it, only point, it can only point to one place. Absolutely. Because they all fit together. And God is so loving that he doesn't want us to be doubting. He doesn't want us to be guessing. And so that's why he's so specific, and he tells us this, 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 so that we can know for sure um, because he wants us to be prepared. That's right. And, and then when we get to the second beast, he's given us all these clues. Yes. So when you put all these clues together, they, they point to, to one nation alone yes. that fits this prophecy. It does mm. not apply to Antiochus Epiphanes no. uh, or, or Nero. Mm. Uh, those people are dead. Yep. It applies <laughs> to a nation yes. that is very active at the end of time. Mm that fits all the clues mm. and eventually is involved in the enforcement of the mark of the beast. Now, mm. going back to verse 12, which you read a little bit ago, uh, it says that this second, this second beast, the earth beast, would eventually exercise all the power of the first beast before him, mm. which would be the, the Roman church. That's and he right. would cause the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Mm. So it tells us that the first beast, when it went down mm -hmm. in the French Revolution, that its power is gonna come back, Yes, right? It's gonna be healed. Mm -hmm. And then the second beast is going to be leading the people of the earth to worship the first beast. So there's gonna mm. be a, a camaraderie, isn't yes. that right? Don't we see that in this text? Absolutely. And, you know, Steve, I can't help but, but think that prophecy is being fulfilled before our eyes. Because for so long, when this nation was founded, we were proud of being a Protestant nation, uh, a free nation where people could be Catholic, they could be Protestant, Muslim, whatever they choose. But at its core, a Protestant nation. And s lately, there has been seemingly a great push to embrace as uh, Catholicism. And we should embrace everyone. We should love everyone. But almost Protestants reaching across the, the gulf, so to speak, to embrace uh, Catholicism. And, you know, we have many examples of that. We had the slide at the beginning of this uh, live stream um, that had the picture of our president before a statue of the Pope. And so I can't help but think that this prophecy is already starting to be fulfilled. Right, and again, we're we're not, um, you know, we're looking at the big picture, mm. the 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 political controversies that swirl around mm. Trump, and, and and that picture and mm -hmm. other things. You know, we all have to uh, come to our own conclusions yes. about some of those things. Yes, but we're we're looking at the big picture mm -hmm. here, and and it is just a it's a fact that the uh, presence 
of Rome within mm -hmm. America is very, very strong right yes, now. Absolutely. I mean, we have Catholic universities across the country, Jesuit universities across the country. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, uh, you know, these shrines that we've mentioned started one of the, you know, this one with uh, Pope John Paul II, mm -hmm. uh, founded by the Knights of Columbus. Mm -hmm. When you think of a knight, <laughs> you know, that takes you back to kind of the dark ages, you know, yeah. the feudal system yeah. and, and the knights. And if you do your homework on the Knights of Columbus, mm -hmm. uh, behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you know, they are definitely a, a knight militant order behind the scenes mm -hmm. with their goals of advancing Catholicism. Mm -hmm. and, and they put this shrine together That's of right. uh, Pope John Paul II mm -hmm. in the shadow of the government the headquarters in Washington, D.C. That's right. And we have a very uh, strong presence of uh, Catholicism in the United States Supreme Court. The yes. majority of our Supreme Court justices are Catholic. And there's a strong presence in Congress, in the Senate. Mm -hmm. We had uh, the Pope, you know, come just a few, ye few years ago and spoke to a joint session mm -hmm. of, uh, in Congress when That's right. uh, Pope Francis came and We've never seen that before. Yeah, and I and like so the, the yes. connections, you know, are are growing. <laughs> Absolutely, and I like the point you made earlier, Steve. We're not judging the hearts of any of these leaders or presidents right. who are who are going to these shrines or meeting with these Catholics. That's between them and God, and we'll continue to watch as history unfolds. Um, but as you say, zooming out, looking at the big picture, we can see prophecy being fulfilled. That's right, exactly. You know, regardless of these leaders' motives, that's um, right. we can see God's word uh, becoming true that's before our eyes. That's right. What, what, we, what we really have in Revelation 13, mm -hmm. when you study it correctly, mm -hmm. in the light of scripture and history and current events, it doesn't point to the preterist view, to Nero. It doesn't right. point to the future after the rapture. It points to things which are unfolding in front of our eyes, which mm -hmm. the devil desperately doesn't want people to understand. That's right. He wants to deflect uh, mm -hmm. our, our, th our, our minds to the future and to the past that's so right. we miss what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did to the Jewish leaders. He yeah. deflected their minds so they thought the Messiah is going to be a conqueror of Rome. Mm -hmm. And they thought he's not here yet because he, mm -hmm. Jesus isn't didn't come to conquer Rome, mm. and we know the Messiah came to conquer Rome. Mm -hmm. And so he, our Messiah is in the future. That's and right. so they, as they were looking for a future Messiah, mm. they were blinded to the Messiah that was fulfilling prophecy right in front of them. That's right. And the same thing's happening mm. today. People are being blinded, looking to the future, looking to the past. They're being blinded to what's mm. happening right in front, in front of our eyes. Mm. And Revelation 13 is God's masterpiece of, of revealing the most powerful religion in the world, mm. which is the Roman church, mm. and the most powerful nation in the world, mm -hmm. which is the United States. That's right. And prophecy predicts in verse 12 that they're going to be coming together. Yes. They're going to be uh, helping each other mm. as we get closer to the mark of the beast. And that is, we see that happening right in front of yeah. our eyes. You know, a lot of people talk about uh, what they refer to as the deep state. You know, mm. there's kind of the deep state behind the scenes. You've mm. heard that, I'm sure. Sure. And I, I read recently that there's also a deep church mm. behind the scenes as well. Mm. And, and that deep church is the woman in Revelation chapter 17 who's riding the beast. Mm. And I'm, I'm writing a whole book on this. Uh, trying to f finish that book, but uh, mm. anyway, we see the influence in America of a deep church, mm. and it's the deep church of Roman Catholicism. Mm. And, and again, you know, we're not talking about the people, because the That's people, right. you know, God knows individual Catholics, and we believe there's going to be a lot of Catholics in heaven. That's we're right. very sincere, and That's we're right. doing the best they can. Yes. But when we look at the big prophetic picture, mm. we've got the, the uh, greatest nation on earth mm. right now, We've got the most powerful religion on earth mm -hmm. by far, which is yes. the Roman Catholic Church led by the Pope with over a billion Catholics. Yes. The largest segment within Christianity. And we're seeing prophecy unfold. That's right. And uh, we're not going to go into all the details, but where mm. is all of this heading at the end of chapter 13? Yes. Well, we know that it's, it's headed to um, the mark of the beast. 
You know, we know it's headed to a, a powerful law that's going to affect the world. And so, again, we know this will be at the end of time, and we know this will be um, a union between these two superpowers that will actually affect us in a very tangible way, um, actually b with laws being implemented. That's right. And, and it surely makes sense that these laws, this final enforcement of the mark of the beast mm -hmm. by the second beast, enforcing the mark of the first beast, mm -hmm. is going to come in the context of, of a crisis. Mm. And I think we have a slide on that. Uh, and we all know that we're in a time of crisis right now. Yes. We have, we're in a time of uh, turmoil, uh, spiritual decline, natural disasters, uh, social chaos. We can see that mm -hmm. very clearly, the, the, you know, the, the, the divide the and the protests and the riots, yes. uh, social chaos, uh, the injustices that are happening, yes. and economic difficulties. Uh, we've seen this through the coronavirus crisis and everything this, that's done to the economies of the mm. world. Uh, and this is going to eventually lead to uh, a, 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 a reunion yes. of, of where the principles of the lamb separating break down. That's right. And then in, in a time of crisis, mm. this nation will deny its religious freedom principles That's right. and it will speak as a dragon and speaking comes from its legislative uh, its legislative powers. Yeah. It's as much as I, I hate to agree with you, that's that's what the Bible says. And you know, I'm I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud of our constitution. And I think this is a great nation, you know, but we have to be honest. We have to be honest what the Bible says about this nation and Bible prophecy. And I'm glad that you brought up that previous slide because uh, some people may wonder. They may wonder, this is a great nation. We have a wonderful constitution, which we do. How could this nation go so bad? And it's very easy to see how that will happen. First of all, because the Bible says it will, but also Think of all the civil unrest. Think of all the things that are happening in our society today. It would be a very natural response for the U.S. to create laws that would try to remedy those things, but violating our Constitution. That's right. Laws in a crisis that That's deny right. freedom. That's right. Yeah, and I think, you know, we're, we can see that coming down the line. Yes. Laws in a crisis that deny freedom. I mean, isn't mm. that the very issue that people are dealing with right now in so mm. many ways? Yes. And, uh, and, and it's also true, Dustin, that if you look at America uh, in the final crisis, this will not be the first time mm. that America has spoken as a dragon. Mm. Uh, we've used force before. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did it uh, even in the colonies. The early mm -hmm. colonies had strict laws. Uh, they called them blue laws. That That's if people right. didn't go to church, uh, you know, so many Sundays in a row, mm -hmm. uh, there, were, there were civil consequences to mm -hmm. that. Sometimes people were, you know, thrown into what they called the stocks and they were mm -hmm. put with their heads in these, you know, wooden, they'd clamp them in and put their hands out here That's and right. they would get beaten or whipped and, mm -hmm. and some people were, were killed. Yeah. And if you look at how, uh, you know, Americans, many Americans, not all Americans, uh, it treated the, the Native Americans, mm. you know, the, the indigenous population That's right. hasn't always been treated fairly. Yes. And if you look at the whole issue of slavery, yes. which we, you know, is now back up on the front burner because of what happened with George Floyd and, That's right. and this whole, you know, movement and the concerns about police brutality and racism and, and mm. all of this, uh, it, it is a fact, however you look at all these things that are going on, it is a fact that America has been involved in, uh, in injustices. That's right. It's, uh, toward it's toward African Americans. You know, yes. that's part of what the Civil War was all about. Absolutely. Part of it. Yeah. And so we can see, you know, in American history, we haven't always acted like a lamb. Very and, true. And it just makes sense that during a final crisis, you know, that... Uh, the worst is going to come out. Yes. In, in the end, and and you know, one mm -hmm. of the things that uh, really impresses me about this, when I look at, when I look at the lamb, and the dragon, mm -hmm. um, you know, I've just been really convicted that we need to go, we need to go beyond 
just the Constitution mm -hmm. and what's happening in the world and the events that are coming in the future, we need to look at our own lives. Mm -hmm. Amen. We need to look at um, the, the struggle within our own hearts mm -hmm. between the lamb and the dragon. Mm -hmm. And we're all in this conflict, aren't we? Absolutely. Yes, it, we need to bring it home to us because it, it can be easy to, um, to know the Bible, but can we apply it to our own lives? Are we right with God? Are we ready for these coming events? Are we living like a lamb? Or are we living and speaking as a dragon? Um, because that will make all the difference about what side we are on That's in right. the last days. That's right. This morning I was reading a, a book. I was reading a book called The Great Controversy. Mm, awesome And book. it was talking about the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 mm. A.D., the first chapter I was reading. Mm. Uh, in fact, I think we've got this book. Yeah, phenomenal book. We've got this book. book right here, The Great Controversy. Uh, we've shared this many times. Mm. Uh, White Horse Media has this as available. And it goes through all the history that we're talking about today. And anyway, in the first chapter, it talked about the Jewish, the Jewish people. Those, n not all Jews, there were many Jews that accepted Jesus. And we, we you know, like Peter and John and, mm -hmm. and the apostles, they were Jewish. Mm -hmm. Paul was Jewish. Mm -hmm. And the New Testament uh, was launched as a result of the Holy Spirit working through Jewish people. Mm -hmm. But there was, there was still a, a, large, a large group within Jerusalem the Sanhedrin, the leaders, many of the Pharisees mm -hmm. that did not want Jesus. And, and because of, th of their rejection, not only of Christ, but of his uh, disciples going on down from the time of Jesus for the next 40 years, mm -hmm. what happened was because of, th of their persistent rejection of Jesus and, and the apostles and the message of the gospel, uh, ultimately what happened was the, the dragon took over. Mm. They, they rejected the lamb and the grace of God, and so the dragon took over. Mm. And they just became, um, you know, a, a completely ungovernable, mm. and the result was that the Lord gave them over, really, to the devil mm. and allowed the Romans to come and destroy the temple and destroy mm. Jerusalem in mm. 70 A.D. and uh, and and you know, mm. m millions of people died yeah. from those, those Roman Jewish wars. And in mm. the Great Controversy, it says that because they rejected, the, they rejected, they rejected Christ and his grace, uh, they had no strength to control their own evil impulses. Mm. That we, you know, we all, as human beings who are fallen, yes. we have a natural fallen connection with the dragon, mm. and and uh, there are evil impulses mm. within all of us yes. that we cannot control. That's right. On our own. Yes. And we need we need the Lamb. We need mm. grace. We need mm. the power of Jesus, or we're not going to be able to conquer these things. Amen. And it just you know it brought the whole thing so close to mm. me, and I thought, wow, you know, in my own life, uh, if mm. I don't have Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit and the grace of God in my life, mm. I am eventually going to be controlled and taken over mm. by the dragon. Mm. And that is the battle that we're all in. Amen. It's not it just is. going on out there. It's not just in Europe or England or you know, colonial mm. America or with the founding fathers or with the two great nations mm. in Revelation 13. It's ultimately going on inside of our hearts. That's it. That's and it. if we, it's in the, and the po so the point is, the dragon's trying to take over our lives. That's right. And if we don't have Jesus, and the Holy Spirit and the Lamb of God, we are going to speak like dragons mm. ourselves. Yes. And we're going to be taken over. We're going to be mm. controlled by the devil and his angels. And mm. it's going to be a disaster. Mm. And there's really no, you know, we have no alternatives. We can't say, I don't want the Lamb, but I don't want the devil. <laughs> right. I don't want Jesus, but I don't want Satan. Yeah. You know, that it's doesn't work, does it? No. It's one or the other. We have to make a decision. That's right. And we cannot expect Steve to be ready for these final events unless we prepare now. Exactly. You know, we can't expect to say, oh yeah, I'm gonna choose the lamb then, but I'm gonna live like a dragon now. That's right. It doesn't work. That's we right. We have to build our character today. That's right. Brick by brick. So when these final events come, we've established, we've been prepared. Um, so it starts today. Exactly, it starts today. And mm. if we're gonna be ready for these events when they hit, 
Mm. We've got to have Jesus Amen. in our hearts. Amen. We have to follow the Lamb. And I want to encourage those that are going to ask questions on the chat uh, to, if you want to follow the Lamb, to just say that. Just, you know, mm. put it in the chat. I'm going to follow the Lamb. I'm going to mm. follow the Lamb. Mm. Uh, and, and also on the bottom of the YouTube video, whether you're watching this live or whether you watch the recording on the, in the comments down below, especially those comments, you can say, I choose to follow the Lamb. Mm. Because we all, we all need Him. And this, this chapter brings it close to home. And uh, if, if you think of the characteristic, Dustin, of, of you know, what word would you use to describe something that looks like a lamb but speaks like a dragon? You well, know. that would be like a hypocrite. That's right. It would yeah. be a hypocrite yeah. and hypocrisy. And mm. at the end of time, you're going to have hypocrisy. Mm. You're going to have forced mm. worship and forcing the mark of the beast mm. in the name of God and in the name of the lamb. That's right. And you're going to have people that are going to join the devil's side mm. and persecute others uh, and it's going to be wrong, just like mm. the Pharisees persecuted the disciples in the yes. name of God. Mm. They showed the ultimate hypocrisy. Yes. Uh, and that's what Jesus said to them when they, when they you know, challenged him about paying mm -hmm. taxes to Caesar or not. He said, you hypocrites, why are you, why are you testing me? Mm. Bring me a coin. Wow. So he called the religious leaders hypocrites, the mm. same word that applies to the second beast, wow. the lamb-like beast. And wow. when, you get, when you boil it down, you know, like I said, if we, th the reality is if we don't choose Jesus mm -hmm. and give our lives to him and let his grace subdue us yes. and subdue our evil nature mm. and our evil impulses mm -hmm. and our tendencies toward pride and self and the world and lust and addiction and all these things, if mm. we don't have the power of the Lamb inside of us, we have no way mm. to control those forces. Mm. They it's are true. too strong mm. for us. Amen. And, but with Jesus, we can overcome. Amen. It's the only way. We need the Lamb. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Yes. So any, uh, any final thoughts before we go to our second song? And then um, we'll take the uh, Q&A time. I just like what you said. If you're watching, if you want to affirm that decision um, that Steve has just appealed to all of us, you know, I will follow the Lamb. Just write it in the chat, write it below. I will follow the Lamb. Um, and that's, that's my decision today, Steve. Yeah, that's mine too. Amen. I will follow the Lamb. Because uh, as you said, we cannot overcome that dragon nature in our own strength. That's right. We need the power of the Lamb. That's right. And so that's my appeal to all of you today. Yeah, and doesn't it make sense, you know, if you, if you have a choice mm. between a lamb or a dragon, mm. you know, who do you want? Yes. You want, you want the lamb, Jesus, who loves you, who gave his life for you, who sacrificed mm. everything for you, yes. or do you want the dragon? who only wants to destroy you and who will destroy you uh, mm -hmm. if you don't choose Jesus. Yes. That's our choice and mm. may God help us yes. to make the right choice. Mm. Okay, I think we're ready for our second song, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot by Fountain View Academy. So we'll take a break and then we'll come back for your questions. Swing low, swing low, sweet chariot Coming for you, carry me In the morning, Lord, I'm getting ready for the judgment day, my Lord, my Lord. I'm gonna ride in the chair in the morning, Lord. I'm gonna ride in the chair in the morning, Lord. I'm getting ready for the judgment day, my Lord, my Lord. In the morning, Lord, I'm getting ready for the judgment day, my Lord, my Lord. Are you ready, my sister? 
Once again, thank you, Fountain View Academy. Uh, great song, thank you. Uh, before we go into the Q&A, let me also mention something I forgot to mention, that Whitehorse Media also has a little, another little book called Decoding the Mark of the Beast. And this book goes into detail about the mark. We've talked about the first beast, which is the first little book, Antichrist Identified, second beast, which is the United States in Bible prophecy, and then now we have one on the mark as well that goes down to the end of Revelation 13 and explains what is coming in the future and what this mark is all about. Uh, Dustin also has a video which is linked at the bottom of our video, uh, specifically on, it's just called The Mark of the Beast, right? Yeah, The Mark of the Beast, and it really explains uh, what the mark is, uh, specifically from the Bible, and is just, uh, it's really a big picture. You know, it shows how we get to the mark, you know, what is the mark all about, what is the background, and so I encourage you to watch that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. on a spiritual level, uh, I don't know if you address this or not, but mm -hmm. the mark of the beast, once we know who the beast is, you know, and what its character is like, mm -hmm. like the second beast is a, ultimately is hypo hypocritical. Mm -hmm. The first beast, its characteristic is pride. Mm -hmm. It has a mouth speaking great things. Mm -hmm. and, and the mark of the beast inside mm -hmm. the forehead and the hand uh, includes you know, the marking of pride mm. inside the human soul, mm. uh, which is very, very dangerous. Pride yes. is very, very dangerous. Absolutely. And we all need to overcome that. So Amen. there's spiritual depth yes. to these prophecies Absolutely. that go beyond uh, history and events. Mm. They all really get down into the heart. Amen. And, you know, whose side are we on? Are we on the yes. side of the devil who uh, exalts himself? Or are we on the side of Jesus mm. who is meek and lowly in heart? Amen. May God help us all. Amen. May he take the devil out of us, yes. and pride out of us, and yes. selfishness out of us, and sin out of us. Mm. Okay, question time. Uh, the first question is, who is the false prophet? Mm -hmm. Who is the false prophet? You want to start with that? Yeah, well, as we read Revelation 13, we see uh, the first beast, as we know, is the Antichrist power. We've talked about that today. And as we get into the false prophet, we're talking about the second beast and also the role that they will play, um, as we discussed a little bit today, in supporting that, that first beast, that, which is the Roman Church State Union. We know that the second beast is the USA. And specifically, um, we know that uh, Protestantism within the United States will, um, in a very, very much, they will apostatize and leave their Protestant roots of the Bible and the Bible only, and they will go back to a system of force, um, which was implemented by the papacy. Um, so it's really that kind of that Protestant uh, part of America. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. we, we know that the, the term false prophet, we know that that is applied to that second beast. Mm. Because when you get to the first beast, or the second beast, uh, it says in... Revelation 13, 11 is the first beast, or the, uh, the, the earth beast coming up. And then verse 12 says he exercises the same power of the first beast and leads people to worship the first beast. And then in verse uh, 13, 
it says that the second beast will do great wonders so that he makes fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, which mm -hmm. we think is still future. Mm -hmm. And then verse 14 says, he deceives them that dwell upon the earth by the means of those miracles. And mm -hmm. we did a whole, White Horse Media did a whole program on, on this, the coming miracles and deceptions. Mm -hmm. That the, the second beast, there's gonna be miraculous manifestations, supernatural things in the future mm -hmm. that are designed to deceive people and to contribute to their getting the mark. Mm. Now, when we, when we look at that text coming from the second beast, and then we look at chapter 19, verse uh, 20, it says the beast was taken, and this is at the second coming, mm -hmm. and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. And that's... That's what the second beast does. Mm -hmm. He does the miracles through which he deceives. Mm. And so that's how we know that in chapter 13, it's the, the lamb-like beast, but in chapter 19, he's given a new name. Mm -hmm. The name is the false prophet. Mm. So that tells us that, that within America, uh, it becomes a false prophet. And mm. I, I, my conviction on this, Dustin, mm -hmm. is that uh, American Protestantism has lost their knowledge of history. Mm. They've, they've accepted either the Jesuit view that it was all in the past or the Jesuit view that it's all in the future, and that view has blinded them to the present reality yes. of that first beast. Mm. And that's the reason why uh, within a Protestant country, you can, we can see that picture that we started mm -hmm. with the beginning of, mm -hmm. uh, of our president in That's front right. of the national shrine of the Pope. That's right. That would never be happening Not at all. If, if the prophecy was understood. That's right. But because there's these other views and, mm -hmm. and evangelicals today, by and large, are promoting the futurist view yes. uh, of yeah. prophecy. They're saying that the beast is future, mm. he's coming. Mm -hmm. And that's what is creating this con context mm. for Catholicism to become so strong mm. in America. Yes. And that really is false prophecy mm. within Protestantism mm. in America. Yes. It's that it, their, their view of the end times is false. That's right. It's their, they've become the false prophet, yes. giving a false view of the end times that blinds people to the true prophecy mm. and what's happening right in front of their eyes. Amen. And the Bible says, my people perish for lack of knowledge. And so God gives us these prophecies to warn us, to prepare us, um, so that we can see what's coming and we can, we can be aware of it. And uh, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Okay, all right, uh, here's another question. Second question is, this is a kind of a, uh, it's a different question. It says, my daughters are still young. Mm -hmm. Should I tell them not to marry and have children? <laughs> <laughs> Is that one for me? Well, we can, we can, uh, <laughs> I can start with that one if you okay. want to think about it. Um, you know, my daughter is young, too. She's 12. Mm -hmm. My son is uh, 15. Mm -hmm. Our daughter, our son. And uh, I don't feel convicted in any way to tell them that they should not get married and yeah. have kids. I mean, people have... You know, we, we believe that Jesus is coming soon and that we're in the last mm -hmm. days and that these prophecies are going to happen soon. Mm -hmm. But people have uh, been convicted about that for, for years yes. in the past. And, um, you know, we, God wants us to be on the alert. He wants yes. us to get ready now. He wants us to, to, to understand that there's an urgency mm -hmm. to what is coming. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't want us to... to uh, make the kind of decisions where we say, well, we only have two years left. We only have yeah. three years left. We only have five years left. We, we shouldn't be making those kind of decisions because that's mm. out of our prerogative. Yeah. Well, we don't know. And yeah. so to tell your, your kids that they shouldn't um, get married and have children, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that. Yeah, I, I'm I with you. Yeah. I would just advise them, make the right choice. Make a good pick um, because we are at, you know, getting closer to the end. And, um, we have to make sure we're with someone who is on who is like-minded, 
um, who believes the Bible and, and what these prophecies are saying will happen. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I don't think we should uh, be extreme and you know do some of these things like um, as if we won't have time in the future. We should prepare for the future. Yeah, Jesus said, occupy till I come. Yes. And we don't know when he's coming. That's right. We need to occupy while we're here. And marriage is part of God's plan. Having children Mm -hmm. is part of God's plan. Yeah. And so, um, you know, but you make a good point that Mm -hmm. it's the bigger issue is who you marry. Yes. So that, you know, so uh, if we have children, you should teach your children that they need to be praying and they need to be selective and they need to be very careful that their, their hearts Mm-hmm. You know, like we talked about the in, the natural impulses of the heart, that mm. the heart doesn't rule mm. apart from the conscience. Amen. We it's a very important that mm. kids grow up and marry. Uh, if you know a boy should marry a girl that is a believer in Jesus Amen. and who believes in the Bible and who believes in the Ten Commandments yes. and who believes in in Scripture, because if you don't, mm. you're gonna you're gonna have problems. Absolutely. The Bible talks about being unequally yoked Mm -hmm. and God doesn't want that. And children Mm -hmm. need to grow up in homes uh, where the parents, Mm -hmm. the father and the mother Mm. are united in their faith in God and in his word. Yes. So that's really important. Mm -hmm. So in answer to your question, no, we should not advise our children uh, not to marry or to have kids. That's our opinion. Okay, question. Please explain the one world government if iron and clay cannot mix. Mm. You mm. have a thought on that? Yeah, well. Um, or if there is a one world government. <laughs> <laughs> People well, assume there's going to be a one world government. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think that we talked a lot about that today. You know, how there will be a union of these two world superpowers. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how that will look specifically, we don't know all the details. We just know what the Bible tells us, that there will be a unity between the, the papacy and the United States of America, and that that will lead to enforcement of law. Um, so we know that um, as far as a one world government, the Bible doesn't reveal all the details of what the last days will look like specifically. Um, and so it's, you know, that's, that's my understanding uh, of that. Do you have anything to, yeah, to add? Yeah, I do. I, I don't see a one world government mm. in the Bible. Mm-hmm. I see people, uh, I've heard, you know, people saying that what's going on here or there is moving us toward a one world government. Mm. And, and I, I don't doubt that there are forces behind the scenes mm-hmm. that would like to see that happen. Yes. That are trying to bring about a one world government. Mm-hmm. But... I don't see in, in scripture, mm-hmm. uh, like, like they mentioned Daniel 2, it's a division right. before the rock comes. That's and right. in Revelation 14, the three angels' messages go out to every nation, Very tribe, tongue, point. and people, showing yeah. that there will be different nations with different governments. Mm-hmm. Uh, Matthew 24, 14 says the gospel will be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, nations. plural, yeah. and those nations will continue to have their government. So mm-hmm. I do not believe personally in a mm-hmm. one world government. Yeah. I think yeah. a lot of people are talking about it and there are people behind the scenes that would like to see it happen, mm-hmm. but scripturally, uh, I don't see it. Now, yeah. now, there, now there is going to be a, a, um, a, a one mind. It says right. in Revelation 17, they will have one mind yes. and then th- they will give their power and strength to the beast. Yes. So there will be a, a unity mm-hmm. of mind and of the devil's deceptions mm. bringing people together. Yes. But I don't see the individual governments disappearing. Mm-hmm. So there's only one government yeah. on planet Earth. That I makes don't see sense. That. that makes sense. And Steve, I've, I've noticed that a lot of people are, um, the devil uses smoke screens. And I think a lot of times people will get so caught up with conspiracy theories and different things. And it's almost like chasing rabbits. You'll never catch it. Yeah. And even if you do, what are you going to do? You know, you, uh, so the key, I believe, is to go by the Bible. There are certain things that God has revealed, such as what we've discussed today, that are crystal clear. And so the idea of chasing conspiracy theories and so forth can be, uh, can be dangerous because it can get your mind off of Jesus. Right, very good. Okay, here's a loaded question, and I'm going to read it. Uh, it says, do you believe that Trump will be the one to give power back to the beast? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
uh, I've got some things to say about that, and you're, you're welcome to sure. um, you know, start out. You know, we, we, um, we don't know. We, we really don't know. And I, um, I try to avoid um, guessing because, as I said, there's so much in the Bible that's clear, and I'd rather focus on that. I do believe we're getting close to the time of the end. Um, I'll leave it at that. And I'll let you, you take it from there. Yeah, well, I, I <laughs> concur with you mm. that we don't, that I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it is definitely concerning mm. that uh, President Trump visited the national shrine of Pope John Paul II. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that concerns me. Yeah. Uh, and and there's, there was a Catholic uh, cardinal who recently wrote a, a letter to the to the president mm -hmm. that was publicized on the major news mm -hmm. networks where he was you know, giving his advice to President Trump and mm -hmm. Trump responded and said this was a, a, a very good letter. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's concerning to see the, uh, the tentacles mm -hmm. of connection mm -hmm. developing. But on the other hand, uh, there are things that President Trump s uh, stands for that are certainly not papal. Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, he, he's certainly not in the climate change movement, mm -hmm. he, you know, and Pope Francis gave him his encyclical mm -hmm. when he met him, and uh, you know, President Trump has definitely not gone that direction. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Trump is, is his own man, and he's hard to figure out <laughs> what he's going to do in the future. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows. Mm -hmm what he's going to do. He certainly is a man with a lot of flaws. Uh, I think everybody, mm -hmm. the, those that like him and those that don't, uh, recognize that. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's his own person. What he's going to do in the future, I, I don't really know. He has, a, he has advisors around him mm -hmm. uh, that are both Catholic and Protestant. He's got Ben Carson as mm -hmm. one of his advisors as well. Yes. Uh, and so how this is all going to play out in the in the exact you know days ahead, mm -hmm. we really don't know. So yeah. I see things that concern me, mm -hmm. uh, and I see things that uh, you know I think that's good. Yeah. So I see both. I think it's good to to be aware, you know, to be aware of what's happening in the news and see how prophecy is being fulfilled. Um, but I think ultimately our focus needs to be on drawing closer to Christ and making sure our lives are surrendered to Him. That's right. Because if we do that. We'll be prepared no matter what comes down the pipeline because we don't know the details. Um, you know, we shouldn't bury our head in the sand. We should be aware, but we should be drawing near to Christ. That's right, mm -hmm. exactly. And, you know, I don't think that people, you know, we're so in, in this, we're so uh, charged in this environment mm -hmm. that if you, you know, if you agree with something the president does or if you disagree with something the president does or you know, or whatever side, if you tweet this or tweet that, mm -hmm. you know, even if you have an honest conviction about something, uh, it's just, the, you know, the, the fury mm. on, on all sides oh, just yeah. flames up. <laughs> and really, Jesus is, is calling us to, to not be in that camp. Yeah. He's calling us to be followers of the Lamb. Revelation yes. 14, 14 says, these are they who follow the Lamb mm -hmm. wherever He goes. Yes. And so, you know, yes, mm. we need to have our, our convictions, and there's nothing wrong with that. And, mm. um, but mm. Jesus needs to be the center of our lives. So Amen. as far as the question goes, I really don't know what Trump's going to do <laughs> in the days ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. So, okay, next question is, will the U.S. ever cease to exist? Well, um, the whole world will eventually cease to exist. Right. Um, the Bible says that God will burn this earth and that the elements will burn with fervent heat. Daniel 2 says the rock cut out without hands, which is uh, Christ's everlasting kingdom, will destroy this earth and all the kingdoms, all this earth will break into pieces. Um, so in that sense, yes. But I think what the viewer is asking, will this nation uh, cease to exist before other nations. Yeah, will we go down yeah, I, before the end comes? I don't believe so. My understanding of prophecy, I believe that these two world superpowers, the USA, the papacy will unite, as the Bible says, and they or will work be... Work together. They'll work together. Work together. Work together, and they will be pushing together till, till Christ returns. That's... That's my understanding. Right, and back to the text I read in Revelation 19, verse 20. Mm -hmm. uh, the context is the re return of Jesus on the white horse. And that's where mm -hmm. White Horse Media mm -hmm. picks, picked its name because 
we identify with Jesus. He's the rider on the horse. He's the center yes. of our ministry, and he's coming on the white horse as the holy hero to get mm -hmm. rid of sin. Amen. And then it says that when he comes, verse 20 says, the beast was taken. So we know the beast is, is operating to the second coming. Mm -hmm. And then it says, and with him, the false prophet, there which is. we've already identified with Revelation 13, mm -hmm. 11, the second beast, mm -hmm. uh, he will be there at the second coming. Yes. And it says, the one that wrought the miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast and them that worshiped his image, these both were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. Yeah, so they're so, going right, so yeah, right up to the end. So yeah, both will be to the end <laughs> yeah. and they eventually, uh, you know, when America fully apostatizes mm -hmm. from the principles of, of the Lamb, mm by enforcing the mark and speaking as the dragon, mm -hmm. you know, then it's, uh, it's, it's doomed. It's yes. doomed. Yeah. And, and the same with, with the beast, mm -hmm. when the, the beast is ultimately doomed too. Mm -hmm. So the two of them working together in an American, in an apostate form, and the papal power working together, mm -hmm. uh, they will both be destroyed at the end. That's right. And so, you know, our loyalty needs to be to Jesus Christ Amen. above anything. Amen. If, you're, if you're Catholic and if you're listening to this, uh, God is appealing to you mm. to be loyal to Jesus more mm. than anything, more than the Pope, more mm. than the church. Amen. Uh, and the same thing with, with Americans. Mm -hmm. If we you know, are citizens of this country, we should uh, have a basic loyalty to America mm -hmm. to its principles, mm -hmm. its constitutional principles, yes. but our ultimate loyalty is to Jesus, Amen. to the Lamb above everything. Yes. He's got to be first. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, good question. Mm -hmm. Okay, next question is, are we in the little time of trouble at this time? And when the big time of trouble comes, is that the time of trouble just for the Christians or is it global for all people? Well, um, I can look at maybe the first part of that. Um, it's, I, I believe that we are, we're approaching that if we're not in it already. Um, as far as the little time of trouble, it seems that the events happening around us suggest that that could be the case. Um, you know, not to the great time of trouble yet, um, but that, that's my understanding of that, that we're maybe approaching or entering in potentially to the little time of trouble. Right, yeah, mm -hmm. mine is the same, that, okay. that when the mark of the beast is enforced, mm -hmm. that will bring us into the little time of trouble. And there'll mm -hmm. be a time period where people have to make a choice mm -hmm. whose side they're on during mm -hmm. the mark of the beast, whether mm -hmm. it's the dragon, the beast, and the mark, or Jesus mm -hmm. and the Bible. Mm -hmm. So that, that choice goes on during the little time of trouble. Mm -hmm. And then when everybody's made their choice, then the doors of heaven close. Mm -hmm. And then Jesus uh, throws down the censer up in heaven and says, it's done. Those who are unjust are unjust still. Those who are filthy are filthy still. Those that are righteous are righteous still. Those that are holy are holy still. But that's Revelation 22, 11. And then, uh, and then he returns. And during mm -hmm. that big time of trouble between the closing of the door and the second coming, that's when the world is completely and totally given over to satanic control mm -hmm. because they've accepted the mark of the beast. That's right. Just like the, the Jewish people before the destruction of Jerusalem when they mm -hmm. rejected Jesus and the apostles and the disciples for 40 years after this long period of grace mm -hmm. God gave them, finally the Lord just completely gave them over to the devil. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Roman armies were allowed to come mm -hmm. and completely just destroy Jerusalem in 70 AD, that's burn right. the temple down to the ground. Yeah. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people died mm -hmm. it's because Satan had taken over. Yes. And that's what's going to happen during the big time of trouble. Mm -hmm. Satan is going to take over yes. those who aren't on the side of Christ. That's right. <laughs> so that's why we need Jesus, and Jesus will bring us mm -hmm. through if we're on his side. So, Amen. So the time, the, so we're not, I don't believe we're in the little time of trouble yet. Mm -hmm. We're getting closer. We can yeah. see the evidences all around yeah, us. But there's sense. still, the Holy Spirit still to some extent controls the laws of the lands. Uh, yes, I agree. And America has not yet enforced the mark of the beast. That's right. And the principles of freedom mm -hmm. are still here. They're toggling. Right. Right. But they're still here, yeah, I agree. and we're not in that time yet. Yes. And, um, mm -hmm. So, but all it's right. coming, and we can see the indicators. Mm -hmm. And and it will come on God's people all around the world. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are in the world, when the mark of the beast is enforced, the mark of the beast will eventually be enforced upon all, it mm -hmm. says small and great. So wherever God's people are, they're going to be having to deal with this. Mm -hmm. And during the time of trouble, uh, those that are on Jesus' side will be scattered all around. Yeah. So, Very true. yes, okay, next question. Where are we right now in terms of prophecy? Well, Where I think we? we, I think you kind of touched on that. If, if you think of um, the statue of Daniel chapter two 
You know, you have the head, the arms, the belly and the thighs. You have the, um, the feet of iron mixed with clay. And you might say we're in the toes, you know, the very end. Um, because we, we're definitely uh, somewhere in the feet. Because um, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome have all passed. They're all, they have all been conquered or taken over or disintegrated. Um, so we're in the feet. And I believe we're in the toes um, of those feet. Yeah, I would add the word toenails. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're in the, the tip of the toenails. Yeah. <laughs> we're down, way down at the bottom. And yeah. in the light of Revelation 13, where we are is the first beast has risen and done yeah. its activity during, you know, 1500 years of Christian history. Yes. And then the second beast has come up and it's here now. Mm -hmm. We can see the coming together more and more mm -hmm. of the first and the second beast, which is at the end of Revelation 13. So I think mm -hmm. we're in that time where the coming together is strengthening. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're not yet at the point where the mark is enforced. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're right in, I would say, when it comes to Revelation 13, where are we? You know, like you look at a map and you say, right. you are here. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I would say that we are, uh, we're in, we're not quite he hasn't quite spoken as a dragon completely. Right. Although we have seen the dragon's voice in American history. Yes. But not completely. And mm -hmm. we are, um, we're, 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 we're in verse 12 where the first beast and the second beast are working together. Yeah. That's happening. Yeah. I don't think we've quite seen yet verse 13 where the great wonders, mm -hmm. I think that's coming during the mark of the beast. When the yeah. mark is enforced, that's when the devil's going to do these great wonders mm -hmm. to convince people to go along with the mark. Yes. And I don't think we're I don't think we're quite there yet mm. in verse 13 or 14 or 15 yeah. and then verse 16 when the mark is enforced. Yeah, and on a positive note, um, Matthew 24 also gives us many of the signs of the last days. And those signs have been fulfilled. There's one of those signs that says the gospel will go to all the world and then the end will come. Mm -hmm. That's a positive sign. And I believe that's happening right here as we speak. God is using this mm -hmm. program. He's using uh, Hope Through Prophecy, White Horse Media, Definitely. Uh, channels like Amazing Prophecies mm -hmm. to really share that everlasting and gospel. Amazing facts and secrets unsealed Absolutely. and belt of truth. And there's, Amen. There's a lot of ministries out there yes. that the Lord has raised up to give his message Amen. Uh, to the world. Amen. So that's happening. Three ABN. Yes, yes. So that's happening as well. Hope Channel. And, and we don't know exactly when that second coming will be, um, but we are to prepare as if it will be very soon. And no one has ever, no one has ever suffered by thinking Jesus will come soon, as long as they keep a balanced mindset. Good. It helps you to be more ready, more prepared to surrender more to Jesus. Um, so it's a healthy mindset to believe that he is coming soon. Um, and the evidence affirms that he is. That's right. And it also mm -hmm. gives us hope. Yes. The hope of Christ's coming. It's called the blessed hope. Amen. That we have hope, like hope through prophecy. Yes. You know, we have yeah. hope Amen. that Jesus is going to come at the end of all this, that uh, the good guys are going to win at the mm -hmm. end. Amen. And that we know what it says at the back of the book. Yeah. And that there's a future where there's no sin, no pain, no suffering, no sorrow, no death, no devil. Mm -hmm. We don't have to battle our evil mm -hmm. impulses. You know, we don't have to struggle with... Uh, with pride, you know, here we are doing a program on television and people are watching and, mm. and uh, we're not going to have to struggle with, well, I, gotta ma I, I need to make sure I give the Lord the glory, mm. not have any glory go to self, That's you know, right. and, and just the battle with pride mm. that we deal with all the time. Sure. Uh, that, that we're not going to have to struggle with that forever. That's we're right. We're not going to have to fight the dragon nature, yes. you know, within us. Yes. Um, so praise the Lord for that. Amen. So we have something great to look forward to. Amen. And prophecy gives us hope. Amen. And it's, you know, I can't wait to have a new nature. Yes. Where I don't have to battle with, yes. with the flesh and, yeah. and those kind of things. Amen. Um, and we don't have to look around and see all the pain in the world. Mm. We don't have to look at, you know, watch tragedies like what happened to George Floyd, mm. you know, that, yeah. that horrific uh, mm. scene. You know, we don't have to see those things. Yeah. That's all right. the injustices and the evil that's in this world. Mm. Okay, question. Is the Spirit of Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit or that he received the Holy Spirit on the day of baptism? Is the Spirit of Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit or that he received the Holy Spirit on the day 
of baptism. I think they may be asking, um, my understanding, if I'm not misinterpreting, is the Holy Spirit a separate being from Jesus? I think that's the question. Yeah, and I think the Bible is clear that it is. You know, Jesus, as the uh, viewer said, received the Holy Spirit. On uh, the, on, that's right, the Spirit came down. Yeah, that's right, yes. Right, so yes, the Bible does call the Holy Spirit the Spirit of Christ, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that it's Him. That's right. Uh, mm -hmm. it, it's still, there. It, you know, Jesus Himself said, go into all the world and baptize in mm -hmm. the name of the Father mm -hmm. and the Son and the Holy Spirit. That's and right. As you mentioned Three. at Jesus' baptism, the Holy Spirit came down, the Father spoke from heaven, and the Son came out of the water. Mm -hmm. So they're not the same person. That's right. Uh, there is a Father, there is a mm -hmm. Son, there is a Holy Spirit, but yes. they are united. Absolutely, yeah. They are united. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, next question. Are the three angels' messages tied in to the mark of the beast? Uh, also, please tell Dustin that Noah Ellis says hi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming you know who hi that Noah. is. Hi, Noah. Yeah, the buddy of mine. Good yeah. to see you, Noah. So are the three angels' messages tied into the mark of the beast? That's easy to answer. Oh, yeah, um, big time. That's part of God's last day message for the world. That is the third angel's message. And so, yeah, that's absolutely uh, yeah, tied so right Yes, you just read in. the third angel's message, and yeah. it's a warning about the beast and the image and the mark. Yes. And so, again, you know, that also tells us that when the third angel goes forth with a, with a loud voice, mm -hmm. warning the world about the beast, the image, and the mark, this implies that there's going to be people in this world mm -hmm. who know exactly who the beast is, mm -hmm. what the image is, mm -hmm. and what the mark of the beast is, because they're, they're going to be warning the world with a loud voice. Uh, mm -hmm. I looked up recently in, in, in my Bible hub app on my phone the word angel. Mm -hmm. In Revelation 14, I saw another angel, you know, the three angels. The word is, uh, is a form of angelon, the Greek mm -hmm. word, which means messenger. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also the same word that's used in Mark chapter 1 about John the Baptist, mm. that he was a messenger, angelone. Mm. And, the, and the word also applies to, to real angels. Mm -hmm. Sometimes real angels are referred to as angelone. Mm. So it can apply to a real angel or it can apply to, to people mm -hmm. fulfilling the will of God, like mm. John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. And I, I believe that the three angels' messages don't doesn't mean that there's going to be literal angels flying flying mm -hmm. around in heaven, you know, right. passing over Los Angeles, passing over New York. Mm -hmm. You know, NASA will pick them up on their <laughs> telescopes, and, right. <laughs> and uh, people will literally see these angels. Mm -hmm. No, those angels represent people yes. who are giving the message. They're messengers. That's right, messengers. Uh, the mm -hmm. first angel gives the everlasting gospel mm -hmm. to every nation on earth. And we know that's the, that's the work of the church. Mm -hmm. That's what Jesus said. So yes. that, sh again, tells us that these angels represent people, just mm -hmm. like the beast represents a system. The second beast represents America. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the angels represent people mm -hmm. who understand these issues mm -hmm. and who mm -hmm. are giving with a loud voice the yes. warning about who the beast is, what the image is, and what mm -hmm. the mark is. Amen. And there's got to be people in this world that, that understand that. Yes. And they need to be uh, giving that message. Yes. And that's what we're, that's what White Horse Media and Hope Through Prophecy Amen. is trying to do. By Absolutely. the grace of God, we're trying to, mm. to be the angels Amen. who give <laughs> the message. Yes. Okay, question. Will the mark of the beast be a technological advancement? <laughs> you know, that's, that's a great question, Steve. That's one of the, um, the most frequent questions that I receive, you know, in, in the mark of the beast video as I look at the comments. Um, a lot of people are convinced that it will be a physical mark, that it will be a chip. And I know we're not going to get into uh, the mark of the beast. That's a whole other topic for another video. But something to remember is this. Throughout the Bible, throughout human history, God has judged human beings on one thing, their decision. Their decision. Not on whether they have a certain, certain color shirt or a certain chip in their hand, um, but it's their decision. God gives us a free will, and we're to use that free will to either worship Him or reject Him. And so the mark will not be a physical chip or a barcode or um, any kind of such a thing, but it will be based on a decision. 
And think about, think about it for a second. If the mark was a chip or a physical sign, then someone like yourself, Steve, or your family, who has made a decision to follow Jesus no matter what, even if it costs you your life, somebody could sneak into your house while you're sleeping and put a chip on your back. And that has nothing to do with his decision. And so God would not give the mark of the beast like that. Um, or someone who has totally rejected God. You know, he could die before they give the mark. You know, so the point being is it, it is based on our decision. And the Bible says that the mark will be placed on the forehead or on the hand. Mm -hmm. Now, if we read the Bible, if we let the Bible interpret itself, the forehead is a symbol of our decision. And the hand is a symbol of our actions. And so, once again, the mark will not be a chip, but it will be based on our decision. Now, with that being said, technology could be used to track people because the mark of the beast is associated with um, an economic boycott. And so technology could be used in the mix. Um, we just don't know exactly how that will play out, but it will not, the chip will not be the mark. Yeah, that, that's a good way of mm -hmm. explaining it. And, and it is true that technology has advanced r rapidly mm -hmm. and that there are discussions these days mm -hmm. of using a chip or using mm -hmm. an insert or using a mark. Like if you get vaccinated, you know, you get a, you get a dot or something yeah. like that. And it's, it's very possible mm -hmm. that those technological advancements mm -hmm. will, be, will come into play mm -hmm. uh, during the mark time yes. as far as, you know, identifying from their perspective perspective who goes along with the mark or who mm -hmm. doesn't and mm -hmm. controlling buying and selling uh, there there may may be something like that mm -hmm. but 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 you make a really good point that the mark of the beast itself cannot be something it can't be a dot or an insert or mm -hmm. a chip or anything like that that somebody could just force on you right so they can't right. just you know they can't take me and tie me up mm -hmm. and say I'm gonna give you that chip we're gonna give you that <laughs> dot I'm gonna give you that insert yeah. and I mean if they tied me up and uh, I, I couldn't stop them from doing that right I, you know if they if they want to grab my head and brace it and put something in here uh -huh. or stick something in here mm -hmm. and if I'm you know tied up <laughs> yeah I can't stop that yeah but but that wouldn't be the mark because right. the mark, because my choice, like the martyrs, the martyrs said, mm -hmm. we're not going to go along with the beast. We're not going to worship. That's right. We're not going to go along with this. And then they, they killed them. Yes. But their, their minds were still with Jesus. Amen. And if someone yes. puts something on me, but my mind is still with Jesus, mm. you know, God will not consider me to have the mark. Amen. And we also have to consider that the mark, that the biblical mark of the beast comes from the beast. Mm -hmm. It's a mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. So it's something that comes from the beast mm -hmm. uh, in, f in Revelation chapter 13, verse 1. Mm -hmm. It's a mark from the first beast. Mm -hmm. It's enforced by the second beast, yeah. but it comes from the first beast. Mm -hmm. so that, and that's what we're looking at, and, and we are dealing with a spiritual issue. And Revelation yeah. is clear also that the mark has to do with breaking God's law. Because at the conclusion of chapter 14, verse 12, it says, here is the patience of the saints. Yes. Here are they that keep the commandments, commandments of, of God, God and the faith of Jesus. Jesus. So yeah. we're dealing with an issue of commandment keeping Absolutely. in reference to the mark. Yeah. And we got to keep all this in, in mind in the midst yeah. of all the confusion and, yes. and uh, the different views. Yeah, because it, it could be a smokescreen. It could be deceptive because if people think that the mark is a chip, then as soon as they get a little chip, maybe they're forced, they might just give up hope and say, well, I already got the mark. Let me just you know, forget about everything. And that's not true. The chip isn't the mark. And vice versa, people who somehow avoid the mark could be fooled into them that they're saved. Um, but as you said, it's a decision. And so the key for us now is to learn to follow Jesus now. Learn to obey Jesus now. So when those issues come, we already have built that character. Good, mm -hmm. very good. Okay, do we have any more questions or are we done? Um, this is the only question that I've got at the bottom. Do I need to scroll up to the top? The only question I, the last question is, will the mark be a technological advancement? That's the last question that I have here. How can we avoid the mark of the beast? Okay, how can we avoid the mark of the beast? Okay, that's the question. For some reason it's, it's mm. not here. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, how can we have, so that's the next question. How can we avoid the mark of the beast? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and I think we just kind of discussed that um, a little bit. As you said, the mark of the beast or the seal of God, um, really there's, there's two marks in the end. A lot of people talk about the mark of the beast, but they don't talk about the seal of God. And God has a seal as well. And again, that would be an, another video. Um, but the mark of the beast video that I have, and I'm sure you've talked about the seal of God, explains all of that. And, but the key is, is to surrender to Jesus now making a decision to obey him and everything that he reveals to you. Um, as Steve mentioned, the mark of the beast issue will be about obedience to God's commandments. And we see that in Revelation 14, 12. And so obeying God's commandments, trusting in Jesus to give you the victory, the power to obey, um, that's really the key. We have to be um, learning to surrender and obey Jesus in everything. Today. Right. And when you look at Revelation 12, the mm -hmm. third angel, war or chapter 14, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Revelation 14, the third angel warns about the mark in verses 9, 10, and 11. Mm -hmm. And then in verse 12, we have, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Mm -hmm. So the saints don't get the mark. So the way to prepare not to get the mark is to make sure you're one of the saints, mm. that you are a follower of Jesus, mm -hmm. that you have faith in Jesus, yes. and that by His power, mm. you are a commandment keeper. Amen. That's the safety zone Amen. to avoid the mark of the beast, is to be the people in verse 12. Amen. Okay. Um, for some, are we done with questions? No, they're not coming through. They're not coming through. Okay, well, something's happening with our questions. Uh, I think we're ready for our offering, but those that did get your questions in, uh, we hope that the answers were good for you. Mm -hmm. And we just want to share a couple quick things. You know that we do take up an offering and we let you know what's happening with the ministry. And uh, I have a report here, a mission report, how White Horse Media has been involved in uh, helping to establish uh, a, a group of, of believers in Jesus way up in the mountains of the Philippines in a very, very dangerous area surrounded by people that are uh, referred to as, as bandits. And the amazing thing is that there's a whole group of these uh, bandits who are now former bandits. And there's a school that's been established there and uh, they're looking to help, uh, looking for help to build a church for these former bandits. And I think we've got some pictures we can show you uh, there, you, there you go. And I don't know the names of these people. The, this picture was uh, shared with me, but White Horse Media has been involved in assisting them. And there you can see one of the uh, bandits with his gun, uh, and then another one, another bandit with his, his gun. And let's go to a next slide. And uh, many of these bandits are now followers of Jesus. Mm. And look at all that. Look at the people in the Philippines going down into the water, being baptized, uh, giving their lives to Christ, wanting to follow the Lamb, and there is a, is a group there. So we want to help those people. Uh, we want to do some, some more missionary work, and so uh, I've been informed that we need about $2,000 to help this former bandit village have their own church. So you might like to contribute to that. Uh, we also have another need that if you want details about, you can email me, but we, we, uh, we have a new opportunity for $4,000 to be involved in a project for the next uh, four months, starting in July, which is going to be uh, very, very significant, and it's going to help White Horse Media to, to get our programs, get our message, get Bible truth uh, out into a much broader uh, arena into the mainstream uh, media and other places. And so if you'd like more information on that, you can email me at steve at whitehorsemedia.com and ask me and, and I'll let you know. Uh, but anyway, that's 2,000 for the mission work, 4,000 for the uh, special project. And of course, we have other needs as well. And we very much appreciate everything that anybody has done and continues to do to help God's work through, through White Horse Media. And I'm sure uh, hope, for, hope Through Prophecy has needs as well. Yes, yeah, um, God is good, but we're always, um, you know, th those videos, the, the videos that are reaching the world for Christ, you know, they do take resources and funds, so yes. um, that's always a, a great blessing. If you um, go to hopethroughprophecy.org, um, or if you go to our website and subscribe, that's a blessing, or uh, if you'd like to contribute, you can go to hopethroughprophecy.org and, and do so. 
Um, but I'm just uh, just honored to be here with you today, Steve, and uh, to be here with White Horse Media. And it's a blessing to be with someone of like mind who is who is teaching God's truth for the last days, who is sharing the three angels' messages. Mm -hmm. And so if you haven't, um, make sure you're subscribed mm -hmm. to this channel. If you're one of uh, our viewers, Hope Through Prophecy, subscribe to this channel. Uh, it's a great blessing, and uh, I hope that you're blessed by his content. Amen. Yes, we, we are a cooperative ministry, and we like yes. working together with others, too. You know, they say two are better than one, and, mm -hmm. uh, and three are better than two. And mm -hmm. so we, we work together. Uh, yeah. Jaime, if you can put up the slide of our website. Uh, I've shown you this before. It's a simple place, whitehorsemedia.com. And where you can click and you can support our work. If you want to support the mission project in the Philippines, there'll be a drop-down menu under that link that will take you to a little section where you can just uh, click that you want your funds to go to, to missions or mission project. That would work. That would be great. So I think we're at the end of our uh, Q&A and our offering, and we do have another, another song, a final song. And what is that song? The song is from the Newhart family. We've heard them before. And it's called, I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. And we put the song at the end because we hope it will inspire you to make mm. that same decision, mm. to be a follower of Jesus today. It's the best choice we can ever make. Amen. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Though no one join me, still I will follow. Though no one join me, before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, no turning back. Thank you to the New Hearth family. Praise the Lord for uh, godly music. I'd like to finish with the last verse of the Bible. Revelation chapter 22, verse 21 says that the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And that's what we hope for all of us, is that Jesus' grace will be with us, that we'll be encouraged. As we look around, we do see prophecies happening right in front of our eyes. Uh, but we know that at the end, Jesus will come and take us to a better place. Mm. And his grace is able to subdue uh, and to conquer the dragon, whether he's uh, in, a, in our nature or whether he uh, roars around us and attacks us during the final days. Mm. The Lord is the victor. The, the lamb will win against the dragon. Amen. Isn't that good? Amen. Praise and we, God. We can have hope because of that. That's right. Mm. That's right. So thank you everybody for watching. We've had mm. a, I think we've had a very blessed program and we'll post this on our YouTube channel so more people can watch it. You can share it and help people to uh, help others to understand mm. what's going on in this world around us. Mm. So Dustin, thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. And why don't, you, uh, why don't you lead us in a closing prayer? Absolutely. Let us pray together. Dear God, as we read your holy word and see these great scenes, these apocalyptic scenes of the last days. Uh, Father, our hearts are, are stirred 
and we see the urgency of the days we are living in. But Lord, our eyes are turned on you. We surrender ourselves to you. We give our lives to you. And Lord, help us to be faithful. Help us to be part of that number that is ready to greet you and meet you when you return for your children. And help us to keep our eyes and our trust on you and not be fearful of all the events that are happening around us. Let us be faithful to the end that we may receive a crown of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.